All right, we are back and we are joined today by the Gibson brothers from Pennsylvania here to talk about the camp in Oklahoma next weekend or this weekend, I guess. Uh, Eric Mason, how's it going today? Pretty good. How about you? Doing good. I'm doing great, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to get talking with you guys. Um, so we'll start off, Eric. You just you just committed to Cornell. Going to spend a couple of years in Ithaca. Looking forward for college. What was it like making that decision? Uh, when did when did your recruiting process really start, and why why did you end up choosing Cornell? Just walk me through that process. So June fifteenth was the first day we could get uh, calls from the coaches, and going like when it first turned midnight on June fifteenth, I got a text message from Joe Green, and uh, it just kind of started off the whole process, start, like phone calls, text messages throughout the whole uh, first day, and then. Uh, through the first four days, I was on, I was in contact with them, pretty much every single day. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that Thursday, we did a Zoom call with uh, the coaches and my parents, and they started talking finance and stuff. And whenever it started uh, to like just feel like comfortable, like I was feeling more comfortable with them, and uh, I just said I was going to commit because first off, it's Ivy League. Mm -hmm. uh, and academics come first for me and then um i mean I, it's just a great deal like i'll have great partners uh it's not super far away from home so it's kind of like a one-one situation for sure so um i guess so for me it'd be a little bit more of a change living in memphis to ithaca there'd be some wet big weather change but you excited to live in ithaca have you been there before uh i was up there like once but it hasn't really it, it was a while ago yeah. So are you going to, when all this COVID stuff clears up, you're going to take some visits up there? Yeah, I can only take one official, but. You can I'll only take one official? There. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably be up there a while on that official. That sounds exciting. Um, so what, what are you excited for most? If you had to look at all the things that uh, Cornell's offered that you're going to be doing in Ithaca, what are you excited for most about committing to Cornell? So first off, it's, like I said, it's not too far away from home, so I won't really have to worry about that now too much. Uh, second, uh, they're, they're getting a new wrestling facility, and I saw tons of videos on it, Yeah. and I'm, I'm, just, I'm like, that's really, really going to be really awesome. That thing looks really nice, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm excited to see the finished product. Um, I was up there last November when they were building it and talking to the people there. It looks really, really exciting. Um, but yeah, that's that's awesome, really cool stuff, and I'm excited to watch you compete in a, in a big red thing. Thank you. Um, Mason, yes. Good to see you here today. You're uh, you kind of really made a name for yourself last year in October, Super Thirty Two. Um, just walk me through. I guess you kind of had a pretty big weight cut. Walk me through that week and what it was like coming into the what it was like coming into the tournament. Um, how laser focused you were, and then why you ended up wanting to go high school for that when you're still eighth grade. All right, so the week. Following up to that, the weight cut, I'd say it was about a 15-pound weight cut. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, thinking, it's not pretty. Oh, no. <laughs> the whole week, I'm just like, I have weigh-ins in my mind the whole time. Like, I'm just so excited for weigh-ins because this, this weight cut, it just, just wasn't it. So the reason why – I wanted to go to high school is because I basically did it all in middle school. I wanted to challenge myself and become an eighth grader to win high school to 32. And I laser focus getting in there. I pretty much in my mind was thinking, taking every match one match at a time. Cause I had to stay focused on one match. Cause if I look too far, you know, I could get cocky and you could have got caught. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so you kind of got into that a little bit. Like, you were so laser focused that weekend. I was, I was with you. The um, I think weigh-ins were Friday night, I believe, or yes. Friday, and then um, I was with you the Thursday night at Jody's house to kind of cut weight. And you were you were kind of in that stage like the last weight cut, but you were still so laser focused that it was like no matter what goes on, no matter how hard this weight cut is, you were like you were ready to win that tournament. Yeah. And I knew I rarely can look at somebody and go. Yeah, they're gonna win the tournament. But that that <laughs> night, I was like, okay, Mason's Mason's about to win this. 
<laughs> so what do you think made you so laser focused that weekend and why you were able to stay so determined on winning that? Uh, confidence, probably. So I, I wanted to win that so bad. It just like the whole, it wasn't just like that night, like you said, it, the whole, like the whole month we started this weight cut towards it. I was laser focused to winning this. I always told my, every night I visualized myself that I'd win. I would tell myself, I'd look in the mirror, be like, who wants it more and why do I want it? I'd tell myself that every night. And now I went out there and won it. And it kind of came down to that. Like your semifinal, even your quarters on um, those matches were razor thin. And yeah. that, that all comes down to determination and who wanted it more. And it was evident that you did. Um, but through that weekend, you got a bunch of attention from a bunch of media outlets, like especially Flo. You got a bunch of coverage. Did you even notice, like, all the attention that was on you that weekend? I mean, I noticed some because as I was rewatching my matches, they would consistently start talking about me. Yeah. But I could tell not just the media, but, like, the people that always, like, that would come watch my matches, like, the whole mm -hmm. mat was surrounded by people. Yeah, every time you wrestled, especially as the tournament got on, the mat started to fill up. Like, people would gather for those matches. That was really cool to see. Yeah, uh, but they were entertaining matches. They uh, were. They were. They were really. They were really fun to watch. So, since then, um, I'm sure you've gotten into a little bit of like going back and watching the videos that you missed of them talking about you and stuff. How has that event and all the attention you've had from it had an effect on you since then? Like, um, do you look at yourself with more confidence because of that? And what is your has your training been any different because of that? Oh uh, yes, that's actually that actually made me more confident. Like. As they talked about me in, in like in high school, that made me believe that I can do, I can do a lot of things in high school. Just, just as a young freshman, I could be doing a lot of things right now. Yeah. And in training, I've been working out with Eric whenever because since now I'm high school, that put me to where I can wrestle with these older guys. And now just having some fun at practice and scrapping with them. It's really exciting, and I know everybody around the country now is going to be really, really tuned into your high school career. It's going to be exciting. Um, but let's, let's get both of you guys back in, um, talking a little bit about the Oklahoma camp we got coming up here, um, next weekend that Flo Wrestling putting together World of Wrestling. Um, when did you guys first hear about this? Uh, what was it like? Was it, was it your parents? Was it Coach Bassett? What, what was the first time you heard about the camp? Um, I'd say about maybe a month ago. We, yeah. uh, our dad, uh, told us we were going to go and then. Uh, we didn't really know what it was about, but, like, Eric Rowe and uh, all the coaches that were going, they kept, like, putting videos, stuff mm -hmm. out. Then, I think it was last week, they put out, like, the top high school wrestlers that are going to be there. Mm -hmm. We were both in the video. Highlight so, reel. Yeah, it's, like, highlight, highlight reel. So, we're both, That's pretty cool we're, both super, yeah, we're both super excited to be in it. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. There are so many really good wrestlers coming. Um and I'm really starting to get excited about high school wrestling. Flo just came out with their his number one card. Um, it's a, it's really exciting. Hopefully, hey Mason, you know I've been pushing for middle school his number one, but you just missed it. Yeah. Kept trying. We could have gotten you in there. You just got to be a little bit younger. Um, but anyway, who who are some guys that you guys know are going, um, and are hoping to are hoping to wrestle with next week? Um. I know Jagger Cohn maybe is going, and uh, he just got announced for his number one. So I kind of want to wrestle him and kind of prove myself. Yep, that's a that's a really really good guy, Mason. You got anybody that you know is going, or you, got, you just have no idea, ready to scrap with whoever? I mean, I know I'm ready to scrap, but I know there's one guy going, and uh, Nick Pizakis. I just want to really wrestle with him. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah, love to see those scraps. Um, but yeah, it sounds really exciting, and I've I've heard a few of the clinicians coming, and I think it's going to be a, a great couple of days with with Coach Guerrero leading it too. He's he's such the technician. If you guys have ever watched him from Oklahoma State, um, he's an incredible incredible wrestler, and I love watching film of him. But yeah, I'm really excited for the weekend. I'm going to be there, and uh, I'm excited to see you guys there too. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming on, and uh, until next time, guys. Yep, All right. Thank you, you Sam. All right, we are back, joined again by JoJo Martin, California. JoJo, how's it going today? 
You know, it's going pretty good, Sam. I'm just uh, woke up. It's a nice little day out, so uh, I'm doing all good. So, yeah, sounds, sounds awesome. Um, the camp next week, I'm really excited for. I've gotten to talk to a bunch of people, and uh, I'm looking forward to to the scrap I'm going to go on next week. But uh, we'll start off talking a little bit about you. You wrestle for Buchanan, um, ranked number four in the country at 182 right now. Um, just talk a little bit about what it's like to wrestle in the state of California, because I feel like they're one of the states that um, are really, really good at wrestling, should be considered one of the top states, but don't always get all the attention. What's it like wrestling in California? Yeah, the talent pool in California is ridiculous. There's hammers up and down the weight classes, and um, sometimes these kids aren't able to come out all the way out to, like, Scoop 32 and Iron Man and a lot of these tournaments, but we have some studs out in California, so don't sleep on California. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one thing I really like about it, um, something I want to get your opinion on a little bit, is the, the one division state tournament where if you're a state champion, you're the best in the state. Um, I think two, I, I only know if California and New Jersey have that. I'm not sure if there are any other states. But um, do you like that better? And if so, why? If not, why not? Yeah, so I really, really like the aspect of the one division. And uh, it really cements the idea like there's one state champ. Like you're the man. So I really like that aspect of it. But I, I can also see why states have two, three divisions, just because it helps grow the sport of wrestling. And right. so, um, like, those kids that probably aren't as good or, like, just don't have enough resources, they can go out and place the state. And it's, it's a good thing for them. And they start liking the sport even more. Mm -hmm. And so I really like that aspect of it. Are there, is, are there many schools in California that do a lot of recruiting and, like, can have people on the school, like they have dorm rooms and boarding schools type, type stuff? So not in the state of California. The CIF, so our uh, central, I mean our state association, they passed a rule uh, last year. So uh, any California school can't wrestle a prep school or boarding school. And it was meant for like football and, rest, uh, football and basketball. It kind of affects wrestling because some of the best schools like Blair, Seminary, those are the best schools for wrestling, and we can't really wrestle. Yeah. So it's tough with uh, the boarding schools and all the prep schools in California. Yeah, that really, really stinks. But um, but Buchanan's a, a really good school and has a lot of history for being really good at wrestling. Just talk about the coaches there. And have you always grown up in that program, like planning to go to Buchanan your whole life? Yeah, so ever since fourth grade, um, I've been training there and uh, just wrestling and what the environment there at Buchanan is great. We have head coach Troy Terrapella. He went to the University of Illinois. He was actually a three-time state champion in uh, high school. And you have Gabe Flores, too. He also went to the University of Illinois. And those are two great guys, just mm -hmm. awesome technique. And just Troy really run, knows how to run a practice. And, uh, yeah, you can't go much better than Buchanan when it comes to coaching. Those guys are two really good coaches. And then um, – just the family atmosphere at Buchanan really helps us grow as a team and uh, just exceed our expectations. That was our uh, motto this year. So, Yeah. Well, you're doing big things out there. Buchanan's doing big things, and I'm excited for uh, what's in the future for you and your school. Um, but looking at recruiting, you're, you're a junior this year, um, so that's obviously something that's starting to come up. You've been getting calls, I'm sure. Um, do you have, like, a top list of schools or priorities that – you are looking for in schools like are you starting to narrow it down what's what's the recruiting looking like for you right now yeah so um my options are pretty they're still pretty open you know this whole covid uh deal kind of messed up the recruiting i'm not able to take some visits i mean the dead period is until like it got extended until uh september 1st which i honestly think it's probably gonna get extended again but, yeah. Um, yeah, my options are open. But when it comes to schooling, I probably want, like, a good school with good academics and some stuff that, like, um, like it offers my major that I want and stuff like that. And, uh, obviously, partners, facility, coaching. Those are the big three for me. Right. And uh, if they meet that, then it's all good. And what's, so, yeah. the, uh, what, what's the major you're looking to, to pursue in college? You know, I really, really narrowed it down, but either agriculture or, like, pre-med, so. And Fresno, yeah. there's a bunch of farming, you know, it's the, like mm -hmm. the Midwest of California, so. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to see once once the COVID stuff starts opening up and you can start looking at more schools. That's going to be exciting. Um, and you know, the West is really starting to get some more power schools out there. Um, obviously, Stanford just dropped, which which really really stinks. But um, you got Oregon State out there. Fresno is really starting to build their program. Arizona State's really good. Um, and then the South Dakota State, North Dakota. Um, yeah, there's some really, really good schools out there if you want to stay close to home, too. I'm excited for that. Yeah, it's really nice. Chris Pelton and Troy Steyer, they're, they're doing great things at Fresno State and Oregon State. And mm -hmm. so I'm excited with, with to see, like, some of these kids that do want to stay home on the west side, um, what they, uh, how they're going to develop at those schools. And um, it'll be good. So I'm excited yeah. as well. It's gonna be it's gonna be very cool when um, the Big Twelve, Pac twelve can start becoming more of a powerhouse conference. But um, you know, talking more about the the summer showcase training camp that's that's taking place early next week. Um, when was the when was the first time you heard of it? Did did a coach reach out to you, or when was the first time you you heard about the camp? So my club coach Jason Kraft, he's a great guy. Uh, he wrestled from New York, wrestled at Nebraska. He uh. He was calling me, uh, I think it was probably about a month and a half ago, and he was like, hey, listen, we have to get out to this camp. There's just going to be absolute hammers out here. It's going to be a great training uh, opportunity. Eric Royals running the camp. And so once I heard that, I was all in. You know, yeah. I really love competition. I'm a competitive guy. So um, just getting out there and feeling the best of the best, it's going to be great. So, uh, yeah, that's when I heard about the camp. And then um, I did a really – I did a really good job. I try to get all my uh, guys on board. So like the Joffreys, Max Marenteria, Rocco Contino, yeah, all those guys. So they're all coming with me, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun for sure. There's a bunch of really good guys there, and you, you talked a little bit about why you wanted to do it. Um, coach Guerrero is is gonna be an awesome awesome coach to run the camp, and I know they've been doing a bunch of stuff out in Oklahoma this this summer, but this one's gonna be like the the grand finale, and I'm really excited for it. Um, and then I've seen some of the some of the clinicians that we're going to have out there. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. We're going to have some some really good technique. We're going to get some good scrap. And it's going to be awesome. Yeah, um, that, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So who are some guys if you if you've seen um, if you know who's coming? Not totally sure, um, like the list of people. But do you know anybody who's coming that you're really looking forward to wrestling? Oh yeah, so my buddy Tate Piccolo. Uh, we've we've known each other since probably ten and under at Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And um, we're obviously he's a little bigger than me, but getting around and uh, scrapping with him would be a lot of fun because he's just he's a hammer and super funky, just a big, big guy. And so getting my hands on him would be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's going to be uh, yeah. there are going to be so many battles. I was talking to Eric and Mason Gibson this morning from Pennsylvania. Um, there are going to be some some really good battles. There's so many really good kids coming. So I'm, I'm really excited. I appreciate your time, and uh, I'll see you next week at the camp. Yeah, see you, Sam. It was great talking to you, so uh, have a good rest of your day. You as well. And for the last episode of this series on the, on the camp in Oklahoma next week, we have Troy Spratley from Collinsville, Oklahoma, here to join us to cap this off. Troy, how's it going today? Uh, it's going good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk to you guys this morning. Um, so, Troy, you are ranked sixth in the country at 120, which 120, let me just say, is an insane weight right now in high school. You got Greg Diakamahalis, Draka Yalia, Cooper Flynn, Ryan Miller, Dean Peterson, and you're just behind those guys. It's a totally stacked weight. Um, what is what is it like wrestling in that weight? Where whichever tournament you go to, really, there are guys throughout the country who are really, really, really good and can challenge um, so many people? I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's just you got to show up and compete. So I mean, nothing really changes. Yeah. So recently you've been spending a lot of time in Oklahoma this summer uh, training with Coach Guerrero. You live in Collinsville. What's that been like with Coach Guerrero in, uh, in Oklahoma when he's been bringing in so many camps and, and wrestlers? You got to wrestle with, with Gilman this summer um, and as so many other guys. What's it been like this summer for your training? Uh, it's been, I mean, it's really uh, a 
blessing, I guess, really, to learn and uh, from all the guys that are uh, on a senior level. So. Yeah, for sure. How how many camps have you done this summer? Has your training has your training gone up? Like, have you had more time to train and um and put in work this summer? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, nothing's really slowed down. Really? Uh, I went, we have had two camps so far. Two camps. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Because a lot of guys right now are are really struggling to find training. When you can make a jump like that, where you can improve your training. Um, <laughs> It's going to jump a lot of levels. But um, so the recruiting time for coaches to start talking to you came recently, your rising junior. Um, what was that day like when you could get calls from coaches? And uh, have you started to look into narrowing down your your top schools for, for college? Uh, I mean, well, uh, the first day they could contact us, actually we had the camp going on, so it was a little crazy to fit in those calls. Uh, because we had two practices during that day, so it was a little hectic to get those calls in and stuff. So, okay. um, so what are what are some of the top things you're looking for in in a college in a school um, that you value a lot? You want to stay close to home. You want good coaches, good partners. What academics? What what are some of the top things you're valuing right now? Uh, pro, uh probably academics and like. Red, like a team that's gonna um, basically be there for you, mm -hmm. so they're gonna just support you. Uh, yeah. Have you started to narrow down a list of, of schools that you're really interested in? Uh, yeah, I got a top five right now. Yeah. Um, do you, are you looking? Cause you can't you can't take any visits right now because of all the COVID stuff. Yeah. Are you are you wanting to wait? and hold off on this decision as long as you can or you're pretty eager to try to try to make it get out of the way um focus on your high school uh no i'll probably wait a little bit on it so yeah. i don't know i just want to uh wait until i can take my visits I'm not yeah. gonna not yeah. gonna make a decision over a zoom call right yeah that wouldn't that would uh that'd be kind of risky you kind of want to see this yeah. the school see yeah family atmosphere is like in the in the school so um yeah that makes a lot of sense um yeah. so next week you have the summer showcase training camp um right there in your home oklahoma um what what did you hear about this early on talking to coach guerrero i'm sure because you've been to the other two camps this one's kind of like the the grand finale um what it, what it, when did you first hear about it uh as soon as Coach Piero was putting it together, basically, because I come to practice every day and I'm here with Coach Piero, so right. So were you just uh, when when you heard it, you knew you're you were going. Um, was that was that the plan? Yeah. Yep. Um, so as as kids started to to sign up and decide they wanted to come, who are some of the top guys in the country that you know are coming that you're excited to wrestle with this week? Um, uh, I'm. Uh, probably Maximo Renteria. That's the one that I really I know. Um, it's coming here. I don't really know much about it. Really because I don't know if I was going to come to this or not. So or uh, Richie. Yeah. If those if those kids could come, that'd be incredible. Those are yeah. um, two two really really good wrestlers. Um, and they're wrestling number one in October. Flo just came out with that um, with that lineup. That looks really exciting. Out really getting interested in high school wrestling right now um yeah but anyway thanks so much for your time troy i appreciate it um i can't wait to see you next week yeah no problem appreciate it for sure all right so are you going on coach next we got coach guerrero out <laughs> what's up sam not much, Coach. I'm talking to Troy a little bit, getting some interviews, preparing for uh, doing some editing for all these all these videos I got. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for, for what's happening next week. Um, just talking a little bit about when you moved out to Oklahoma to, to start taking over the RTC there. What was that – what went into that decision? What was that like when you first got there? Oh, 
you know, it feels like a lo long time ago, but when I think about it in terms of months, it's really not been that long. Um, you know, I think without getting too in depth, I've done several interviews over the years on it. I just, I just saw a, a void. I saw something that I think needed to take place. And I think I've kind of just came from a school of thought, maybe growing up that if you want to see something change, well then get your hands dirty and change it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, I think a little bit of that, I think, I think, uh, I think family went into that decision a little bit, and I, I've got four children, my wife and I, and family's important to us, and uh, and I knew I wanted to, to, to do something that that, uh, that allowed, you know, um, our oldest son to, to have some opportunities that uh, my dad gave me, um, you know, and, and I think there's a lot of things went into that decision, a lot of things, went into that decision. you know, probably primarily family. Yeah. So what are some big changes that you've seen since you've gotten there in the RTC, in the, in the college program there, and then in the state, the, the entire state itself? Oh, I think from, from, the, from the college standpoint, you know, producing world team members, John Demas, junior world team, Jake Woodley made the world team. Um, unfortunately, he had to wrestle off Bo Nickel and Fargo. Um, Bo took that spot from him, but... Uh, but I thought Jake was competitive. You know, he won the U23s, and um, Anthony Mantanona made a great world team. I mean, um, won a Pan Am gold. Uh, Jake Woodley got a Pan Am silver. I mean, just, you know, maybe just bringing that international. Um, one of the board members of the RTC had mentioned that they hadn't had a junior world team member since since uh, since Andre Metzger. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's crazy. Helping them, you know, embrace the value of that and, and helping um, put people back on world teams, um, you know, uh, winning, winning the U S open juniors, uh, you know, just, just probably that was maybe the goal. And, and obviously, you know, producing a couple of those guys in a couple of years, um, you know, when they hadn't done that and gosh, whatever, whatever that would be 30, 35 something years. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, the yeah, level Crazy, and you got, oh, you got Frank there too, Frank Molinero. And Frank was, he, he's moved on to Arizona State, yeah. but yeah, it was yeah, you're a right. Short, short period of time, short period of time. We're kind of in a regrouping mode right now. Um, I just picked up some RTC athletes that are going to train out of this facility here in, in Tulsa. Um, so kind of just maybe getting a landscape together of what uh, what we want it to look like. Um, but on, but on the on the on the state level. Um, Maybe just create a, some synergy around the state. You know, uh, one thing that, that I had noticed, and this came from Shane Roller from World of Wrestling, the Roller Productions. A lot of people may or may not know, we actually live in the same town, about two miles apart. Um, our boys all wrestle at Bixby. And, you know, he was explaining to me what he thought Oklahoma needed. And the first thing was to kind of unify and almost create like a union. Like when we go to VAC duels or when we do things like no more jumping off to other states. Right. You know, we needed to, and there's nothing wrong with that, but we need to control that as much as we could where Oklahoma put the best team they could together versus half your good guys on one team and half your good guys on a national team. And then you're left with only a third of your best guys in your Oklahoma state, your Oklahoma state national team. Right. Right. Uh, so really kind of unifying that a little bit and making sure people have places to come together and train and and, uh, and promote that. And that worked out pretty well. I know um, at least from when, and I, and I kind of look at it in the years of my son when, when he's in school, it's kind of following the years. I think that since we went to that format, we've made the gold pool every single time. Um, and, you know, I think both 14 U teams made the gold pool in Greco at Schoolboy Duels. Mm -hmm. So both the red and blue team both made the gold pool. And then the, 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 the top Oklahoma team last year at Schoolboy Duels uh, made the finals. You know, had a lot of guys go 8-0, go 10-0, and, and then uh, lost in the last match to Pennsylvania for the 
for the finals in the finals, and um, I think it came down to heavyweight. I think it actually came down to it, it heavyweight or heavyweight. No, no, Pennsylvania won. I think they won by three or six. But mm -hmm. just just making that move with that age group team, kind of creating a little state pride and things. I think that's been a big factor. Yeah, and Oklahoma has the skill for sure. They've always been um, really, really good state. One of the top for sure, but I, I agree. They definitely spread out a lot. Um, but looking at this this camp or the, these camps that you've had this summer, what was the motivation um, for the first camp, I guess, having people come in and um, and start producing some training, a good training environment for people who needed it? I think the motivation came from the fact that we knew wrestling needed to get back out there. Um, we were open and, and we were fortunate enough to be in a situation where, where wrestling was open and uh, sports were open. We we're starting to see little league baseball games and start to see sports take place back in May. And mm -hmm. with that, you know, the camp just happened organically. It's, you know, these guys and your friend knows these 20 guys and, you know, this guy's close with the young guns crew and, and it just kind of all happens. And then, you know, RTC coaches talking, coaches, you know, you're starting to kind of just figure out what you want to do. And, and, uh, next thing I know, I look up and there's like 70 people converging on Tulsa. Um, you know, it, I don't think it's a credit to anything other than the community and, and, and everybody being excited to have everybody here and, uh, and just really having a facility that people can come train at. So mm -hmm. with that said, um, you know, it happened pretty organically. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a lot of work. You right. Know? Um, you know, and then the work side was, was the COVID testing. The work side was all the preparation and protocol that went into making sure people had a safe environment to train. And I can say the statistic now, out of both of those camps, we've had zero COVID outbreaks. Zero. That's awesome. Zero. That's and, you, know, you know, 150 people that came through this gym in, those, in that time period. And from all over the country, and we've had zero outbreaks, you know, and that's probably a testament to Dr. Jacob Callis and all the tests that he did and all the protocol he came up with, to what he thought was going to keep everybody safe, and it worked. So uh, I had to slide that in there because I think that's important. To yeah, that is wrestling yeah. safe. We shouldn't be afraid of, of bringing wrestling back. It's safe. It's safe. Right. We know how to keep clean. We know how to keep ourselves clean. So, uh, you yeah. know, wrestling is at the forefront of all that. Absolutely. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited because I think a lot of people are starting to notice that. And I think we're, um, we're on the way up, especially for the youth level of wrestling in, in high school. Um, college has a few more hurdles to jump, but um, yeah, right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very excited for, for what's going on in the future. But um, specifically, the summer showcase training camp next week, um, obviously you've had those two camps. Did you think that you wanted once once you got those and saw how you could you could actually make it happen? What was the train of thought like to get one of this size and this magnitude? There wasn't a train of thought. Um, <laughs> some people approached me about it, and I believe it or not, I actually declined. I said no, thank you. I'm, I'm not interested in doing that. Um, it was just, I just felt like it was late in summer, and and uh, we weren't know what was going on with school. You know, we just there's a lot of unknowns and, and I've never really had an interest in, in, in doing something of, of, of that. I usually just open the gym and if people are here, we train, mm -hmm. you know, just real simple. And, uh, Shane called me and said, you need to rethink that. You know, we talk a lot, talk several times a day. And, uh, he said, you need to rethink this. I think there's interest. I said, no, oh, He's and then obviously he said we'll put it on, but I think you're 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 not recognizing how much interest there is, and and he was right, he was right. I mean, I think as soon as they opened up, I mean the top guys started signing up. I know you're part of that Young Guns crew, and I know they jumped on board immediately, and then Pinnacle, and then to the Throne, and Buchanan. And, I mean, everybody started jumping on board. Um, it, you know, so you know maybe those first two camps helped a little bit from. People knowing knowing that it was going to be good, it was know what to expect. Um, you know, we got Sammy Sasso jumped on board to come out and, and be a guest counselor. I mean, people just started jumping on board real quick. Um, so you know, Shane was right in that regard. There was a demand for it. Um, so kind of let world of wrestling and, and flow wrestling 
take over and, and they've done a great job and, and really, you know, I, I haven't had a whole lot to really to do other than, uh, you know, keep doing what we do here and, and watch that, watch that grow, which it has. Um, right. I think, I think texting with Shane and those guys this morning, um, I think the numbers were 140 plus, wow. you know, uh, it's been jumping up by about 10, 15, something, 15 a day. And then you all, obviously, wrestling people, we all know there's a, there's a surge right at the end because all those dads like to sign up at the last minute, right? Right. So, I mean, I know, I know that, you know, we'll have to do some things. I'm sure we'll go over. Um, you know, we've got to look at the insurance policy and then see what it says and how many we can actually fit. Um, but I don't have any doubt at this point it's going to go over 160 and, and, uh, and probably have to close it down probably pretty soon. Um, but uh, the athletes that have signed up, uh, you know, uh, at some weights it is it is Fargo. You know, not all weights, not all sizes, but but uh, at some weights it is Fargo. It is Fargo. You're, you know, there's both finalists have signed up, or you know, the top four, the four of the top eight have signed up, or you know, I think one we looked at it was six of the eight All Americans had signed up. So for yeah. last year, um, you know, I know you're coming and that whole Young Guns crew is coming and, and uh, you know, you know, Bill Bassett's crew out of Forest Hills is signed up. And yeah, I mean, at some weights, it, it is going to be Fargo. So it would be exciting. And uh, we're hoping everybody has a good time. I know Flow Wrestling's got some really cool things planned, what they want to do with each individual uh, attendee in terms of creating profiles and, and helping them, you know, navigate the waters of, of, uh, of the recruiting process and maybe how to aid in that. So I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. I'm, I'm fortunate to have just let world of wrestling and flow wrestling kind of take over and just kind of watch it grow right now. Yeah, that's incredible. And it's great timing too, because it lines up right with um, the, the Reno worlds in Thompson this weekend. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing is I'm, I'm competing in Reno. Then the next, the next day, um, over there it works out really really well and i think you'll uh, you'll get a lot of those um but i'm really really excited i can't wait to be there and uh, i think it's going to be an awesome awesome show you good show you a little hospitality yes sir yes sir well i, I can't wait it was good talking to you guys i appreciate the time and uh, i'll see y'all next week all right see you sam